All right. Ashley Walker, welcome to Empower Network TV. Very excited to be doing this with you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Okay, so walk tall. What does it mean to walk tall, Ashley Walker? What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's it's a fun catchphrase that um, not a lot of people break down, but I am 6'2", so tall, and my last name is Walker, so walk tall, but really more than that, it encompasses how we, how we do things, how we live life, how we handle business, how we handle relationships in that holding your head up, doing things in an honorable way, yeah. Wow, so where, where did you grow up that you would be raised that way? Um, I grew up in, uh, outside of Fayetteville, North Carolina. So Fort Bragg, um, a lot of people know it by that big military town, uh, in the country. Yeah. Okay. And then you just somehow were raised to, with those kind of characteristics, those morals of this is how you do life. This is how you represent. No. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah, we want to hear the story. So what, what did it happen? <laughs> no, that's not quite how it went. Um, you know, I was raised that family was super, super important, um, that you stick together no matter what, and you, you, you cover each other, right? And so in doing that, we cover each other's flaws, um, as well as when, when each other falls, right? And so even to this day, it's a little hard to talk about those flaws that other people had. Um, and and we, we go through life and we figure out how and why and what. And I'll tell you, the coolest thing that ever happened to me was that I was separated for a reason, right? Because if I would have became, if I would have been around the people that I wanted to be around all the time, the most, the ones that were most important to me, they maybe had other ideas of who they wanted to spend time with. If I was around them all the time, I would become like them. And so God separated me and 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 I got to be different. Um, I got to break the mold. I got to break the generational things. Um, and, and, you know, I grew up at home. I grew up in the same place. Uh, but when I was about 24, I took off with the first army man out of town and I went to Colorado. I uh, stayed there for eight years. After that, I was in Winston-Salem, North Carolina for a few years, Mississippi, and now I'm back home in North Carolina. So I was gone for almost 15 years to be able to go and see and, and see different mindsets and the different ways people think and, and be able to do my own work at the same time. So it, it led to a beautiful full circle. Okay, so it sounds like there were some interesting decisions you made along the way. <laughs> right, right, for sure. A lot of um, interesting ones, yeah. 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 So how have they shaped you? Oh, man. In every way, right? So if we were to think about big decisions that I made along the way, um, my first really big decision, um, I was engaged and I decided 13 days before with tons of money spent that that wasn't the life I wanted to live. And that was a huge decision, right? That took a lot of a lot of work, a lot of therapy to get over, <laughs> a lot of stuff, right? And it was a big heartbreak um, because it wasn't my choice, but it was what was best for me. So that decision, um, that decision changed everything. It took me in a, a different uh, direction completely. Um, I never thought I wouldn't live at home. I never thought that, and so. When, when that didn't happen and, and I went to Colorado, that was probably the first big change where I had to choose my later self and, and not be so selfish in my right then self. Yeah, there's so much story here. There's so much story. <laughs> we're just, we're like covering like the top. Bit, right. <laughs> I'm trying to stick within your time frame. <laughs> What, how have you learned to evolve? Because are there things you're now, I'm assuming there's things you now carry, adhere to, believe that you didn't, but now you do. And then I also would assume that there's things you used to have in your bucket of beliefs that are no longer in that bucket. Sure. Yeah. So um, as a coach, uh, before, before coaching, right, I, I did my own work with a coach and and even before that, you learn um, 
when you when you come from a small town and and you don't see a ton of the world, you don't have all of those different open mindsets. And so going to different places, seeing different things, you're able to see uh, more than what is just what you were raised with. And so big things, limiting beliefs for one, right? So the fact that you have to work 24 seven to have a good retirement, that you have to, um, that you have to perform and be on your A game 24 seven to be valuable and worthy. Those were both big things that I had to get over. I'm actually in somebody's book for a chapter for validation and seeking that and, and how to get over it because those were huge in my life thinking that I had to do those things. And I, I love the idea. Um, I'll share real quick. One of my biggest life lessons that I've learned so far is expectations and how we place those on people and people place this on us. The five words have to, or five phrases have to, gotta, need to, supposed to, and should. And we live our life based off of those. Ashley, you should do this. You have to do this. You need to do this. And then I started asking why, like, why do, why am I supposed to do this? Like, does that honor me? Does it honor God? Does it serve my soul? Does it feel good? And so when I started thinking like that, there was no going back, right? There's no going back to what I should do and supposed to do because who says, so that was that, that. Those are some of the big ones that I was able to to process. Hmm. What do you find your clients say about you most? Hmm. That I'm real. That's probably the most honest um, and most frequent one that I get. That I uh, that I'm going to we. In in we have a coaching firm, so there's there's coaches underneath me that um, coach for Walk Tall Elevation, and what we offer is that we are going to tell you what other people won't. Right, we we're your friend off the call, but on the call, we're the coach that's going to tell you what other people won't tell you, and and we're going to be real. We're going to step up and we're going to say the hard stuff, the challenging stuff. So I think that's what most people would say about me is that I I don't really sugarcoat. I hate vulnerability. I hate vulnerability, but it comes so easy, which is odd. Just sitting with that. <laughs> I give you something to think on. <laughs> so what is on your horizon now? Because we're about to close 2023. Mm -hmm. Like, well, what are you doing? What are you guys doing in 2024? What's, yeah. what's in your... Man, super excited, super excited. We have a group that's coming up and it's called the Best Friends Club. And essentially what it is, is we meet every Wednesday and it's completely free. And we hop on and we just talk about real life stuff. It's 50 weeks of the things that throw us off our path, right? Um, and so I'm super excited to share that. The last few years we've charged for it. And, and that's the difference this year's is it's free and that anybody can hop on and it's it's biblically based. And so we're we're tying in that that aspect and and just giving people a place to go and be long and see something greater than themselves and being a part of that. I'm so excited for that one. You say it's a just friends club or what'd you say it's called? I'm sorry, my Southern accent is getting to you. The best friends club. No, it was me. <laughs> me, not you. So the best friends club. You know what? Yeah. I should, um, you should come on one of our first date networking events. There are three events we run. And yeah. We're, we're going to be running another one maybe this weekend, but I just think you should you come be my guest. Um, all the Academy members can bring a few guests. I'll talk mm -hmm. to you about it after this, but yeah, I just think with what you're doing, yeah, let's let's get you out there more in the community. I love that. Thank you. I love that. And you know, I'll, I'll explain the the title for it. It began out of it was the inner circle, and then we we noticed that these people that were getting on there really needed a place to connect, and we were really sharing, right? And so um, I know in in our society, a lot of times it's hard to connect, and and I struggled with that one as well because we get hurt, we have all these traumas and things. And so we we resist connection. And this place is just a place to go to, to do that. But then there's a, you know, I have an underline, an ulterior motive, right? Uh, as, as the leader in this, 
it's not just the best friends club for who you connect with, but it's the best friends club of connecting with yourself and becoming your own best friend and your own biggest cheerleader. Instead of our biggest critic, you get to be your biggest fan and uplifting you. And then there's other people there to, to encourage that. So that's, um, yeah, that's cool. Awesome. So, so you're, you're in a book, you're, you wrote a chapter in a book. You did that. No, I'm in someone's book. They they uh they wrote a chapter on me. I also have I have a three month journal that's on Amazon. It's called Hey Friend, and it is it's super easy. But it, it's what the fun part about that is is what I needed. Right, I created this journal for me myself to stay consistent. I noticed that I was really consistent in life when I was doing these certain things. But it was so hard because I was writing all these things down every single day. And I was like, you know what, let's just make it easier. I'm just going to make my own journal. I'll print it out. And that way I won't have to do it every day. And then it sold like hotcakes. And I was like, man, that's kind of cool. Like I was making it for myself. So that's, it's called Hey Friend. It's Ashley Walker, Ashley McLaurin Walker on Amazon. So, yeah. Amazing. Can you drop the links for anything after I tag you in this? You're in the Facebook group. I'll tag you. People can find you, but drop any links in the comments to anything you're selling or promoting, please. Yeah, absolutely. I appreciate that. Thank you. Well, you're just like a, a warm Southern hug. There's someone that do, <laughs> do people usually tell you that they just, they just naturally trust you. I'm assuming you get that a lot. Yeah. Yeah. It's um when you're, when you're open with people, they feel the ability to be open as well. So I, I am a preacher's daughter. <laughs> um, and I, so am I, am used, so am I. yeah, yeah. So one thing, one thing that I picked up from, from holding that role is there was a lot of judgment. And so I didn't like that. And I try my best to, to be as least judgmental as possible. And so that's, that's one of, I'd like to say is one of my superpowers. And I think people can kind of sense that a little bit. Um, that's something I put a lot of intention into. So maybe that's where that comes from. Amazing. Well, I love having you here. And um, is there anything else you want to leave people with? Because this has certainly been a warm Southern hug to people's hearts if they're feeling cold. I love that. I love that. Um, the one thing that I would, man, if I could give anybody anything, um, the one thing I would say to do is to live a life of guilt-free freedom. So what does that mean? It means you get one chance, one chance at this big old thing, right? One chance at this game, at this world, at this ride. And if you're doing anything other than what is uplifting to you, to God, to that is honoring that that brings you joy, that allows you to be blessed and be a blessing to other people. I would encourage you to ask yourself why you're doing that and to make some efforts or connect with someone to help you make some efforts in changing that. We we get one chance. And so there's no reason to, to live in anything other than beauty and peace. And, and remember that people raised in chaos a lot of times don't understand peace, but it doesn't mean that it has to always stay that way. And so to gravitate towards it, be open towards it. Beautiful. Well, you just power packed that interview. So thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. What was your, what was your favorite game you growing up? What did you play? Board game, uh, outside, what'd you play? So I, I played a lot of basketball. I think that started about four. Um, <laughs> if, if I had to tell you a man, I don't play a lot of games. I've never played a lot of games. And it's funny you ask that because my kids, I have two boys and, and they'll want to play games and I'll have to stop and play games and like intentionally play games because in my, I feel like my brain, I think so deep that thinking that's, that's one area that I have to put a lot of effort into is being intentional to be fun. Uh, we have a group and it's called faith, family, future, fun, and funds, if you NDS and that fun part, I have to be intentional on that one. So I played basketball because I was on my way to college playing basketball from four. Um, but it wasn't necessarily all because it was fun, but that's part of those life lessons, right? Mm, okay well yeah <laughs> well, this is awesome i appreciate you being here i'm gonna we'll end the broadcast here if you've been listening watching empower network tv ashley walker just gave you a big old warm southern hug please reach out to her she'd love to connect with you she's gonna be dropping her stuff 
in the Facebook group, in the comments. And um, all right, Ashley, thanks. I'll stop it here and then we'll uh, we'll just continue chatting here. All right. So